Hey guys, thanks for staying with us on Astro one in Now today we're going to talk about diseases. It's never an easy topic. Nobody really likes to talk about diseases because it's all about bad things. Negativity, death, ailment. And when we talk about parasitic diseases, it makes things even worse. We're talking about things like malaria. Bad, bad news that we hear every day surrounding our lives. Well, my guest for today has made it his life mission to understand parasitic diseases and make a difference, especially in the field of parasitology. His name is Professor Dr. Mark Junwa. He is, of course, a joint recipient of the Medeca Awards. My name is Said Ferdinand Omar and you are watching In Person. You know, just as how you are certain every morning the sun will rise, you are also certain that it's almost impossible to find a doctor that does not work. And, you know, trying to schedule this interview with Professor Dr. Ma, it's next to impossible because he's always working, which is why we're meeting up with him here at the uh, International Medical University. And here's the man himself. Hello, Professor Dino. Welcome thank, to IMU. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. It's, uh, it's good to be here. I've heard mm -hmm. a lot about this university. Thank you for coming with us. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, we're talking to a, a very important man and, and he's very busy. So let's just jump right into the questions. Prof, you are Barnan, uh, one of the leading names in the country uh, in the field of uh, parasit parasitology. Yes, uh, yes. And can you please tell us, you know, in the grand scheme of things, where does parasitology, especially in your area of study, sits in everything that's medical in, 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 in Malaysia? Well, parasitology is that discipline which is uh, part and parcel of tropical medicine. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it is such an important aspect of tropical medicine because uh, it is it deals with diseases which we see in the tropics. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was in the old day, olden days. Now, we know that parasites and parasitic diseases are not only present in the tropics, but all over the world. Right, so yeah. it has assumed a global importance now. Mm -hmm. So it's assumed a global importance, which is precisely why uh -huh. all your work over the decades that you have dedicated of your life uh, into this particular area of study has given you the Medeca Award. You're the joint, of course, I'm talking about uh, to a joint recipient of the Medeca Award uh, that you received last year. So tell us about the year that has just passed, being one of the very, very few Malaysians to have been selected to receive this very prestigious award. Uh, I, can, I can safely say that I am extremely proud and uh, thankful that I was selected to be a joint recipient mm -hmm. of the Medeca Award. I did not realize that uh, my work would be recognized mm -hmm. and it was indeed a great surprise. Now the year has gone by, it's, just, it's already a year now, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, where I have looked back at what I have done to have deserved this. Mm -hmm. And I really cannot pin down <laughs> on to what exactly I have done to have uh, been to, uh, chosen to be joint recipient. Right. But nonetheless, um, even if you can't pin down, you know, that, 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 that very of so why you deserve to receive the award, but nonetheless, I'm sure you agree that the area of work that you have done, the body of work that you have done is indeed a very important one. So why do you think parasitology is an area of medicine that warrants an award of the highest accolade as such? Well, let's just take one example of parasitic infection. Mm -hmm. For example, malaria. We know that malaria kills more than a million people a year, mm -hmm. uh, mainly in the uh, undeveloped and uh, newly developed countries, especially in the tropics. Most of the deaths are in children, mm -hmm. and uh, these deaths occur in people who are less than a year old. Mm -hmm. And so, this is a terrible toll on, on mankind. Mm -hmm. And it's not just death of children, it is the toll it has on people who are infected, travelers who go to endemic areas, people who live in endemic areas, endemic areas being mm -hmm. countries where the infection is present. Mm -hmm. And this has a tremendous toll on, the, uh, on their productivity mm -hmm. and on their health. Right, I see. So the matter of fact is, parasitology deals with issues that 
have global significance. A global significance yes. and is of global importance yep. and has mm. and we see the impact of, of, of parasitology uh, and the advancement that one um, uh, achieves in it on a daily basis because the further you go with parasitology and yeah. how you deal with parasites, the more lives are saved. Yeah. Yeah, but the, is the, that the bottom line? Saving lives. Saving lives uh -huh. and uh, make people healthier so that they can uh, achieve to the full potential. Right. Because if you are sick, of course you cannot uh, of course, achieve right. as much as you can if you are healthy. Of course. And yeah. uh, this is all about saving lives and making people healthy. Right. And uh, and uh, it is a continuous battle. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we think that we have, we are getting better in our in our treatment uh, of diseases like mm -hmm. malaria, the parasites are getting smarter. Mm -hmm. They have developed resistance to the drugs that we have against malaria, for example. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's a continuous battle. How we try to overcome drug resistance in parasites versus how do we approach and deliver such treatment strategies to people who need it. Mm. These are issues that are of importance and which will take a lot of research for us to be able to address. Well, it's that very notion of research that yes. has brought you to where you are right now. But the thing is, the research that you have done is extensive, but at the same time, it's also about these people that you can hear and you can see around us, the yeah. students that you have now. And this is your focus now, yeah? Yes, training the next generation of people uh, to be able to continue the work that is so essential mm -hmm. uh, for the progress of uh, mankind. Right, I see. Okay, well, we have to go for a very short break yeah. right now, Prof. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but when we come back, we'll see uh, and try to understand the things that made Prof say, hey, let's go into medicine. Let's do this. Stay with us on In Person. Sejak sekian lama, Ferrero menyempurnakan seni penciptaan coklat yang teristimewa. Warisan keemasan inilah melahirkan Ferrero Rocher. Suatu legasi yang menukar saat istimewa anda kepada saat-saat keemasan. Ferrero Rocher, warisan keemasan untuk saat-saat keemasan. Okay, we're back and I'm, uh, we're still with uh, Prof. Mark here. Prof, you know, we are surrounded with student works and, and these are the people that are, you know, now starting up to be the doctor that eventually, hopefully, they will be up to your standards in the future. But let's just go back into time a little bit and let me ask you, what was the point where you decided in your life that medicine was the path for you? Well, uh, if, as I've said it before, um, I think it is my childhood experience with medical doctors and the fact that I was safe from the very, very difficult to treat disease mm -hmm. at that time when I was very small during the Japanese occupation mm -hmm. that, uh, that first interested me in the vocation of medicine. And when my family doctor, uh, my contact with my family doctor, where he showed examples of what real doctors should be, professionalism and ethics, and which was to treat the sick irrespective of whether they could afford it or not, mm -hmm. which really opened my eyes to uh, this calling, uh, mm. medical calling. I see. Yeah. So from then onwards, it was quite clear to you that medicine was the way of life that you're going to choose yes. for yourself. Uh, the next phase would of course be no, anybody can be a general practitioner, anybody can practice medicine, mm. but you chose a specific area of interest that has stuck with you for mm. many decades, which is of course parasitology. Um, at which point did you decide this was going to be the big uh, slice of pie of your life? Was it after you did your uh, 
um, your horsemanship when you started uh, uh, providing your services uh, at the Parit Bunta Hospital in 1968? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, uh, you rightly pointed out that uh, during my horsemanship days, I was fortunate to have a very good role model. Uh, uh, Dr. Datu Devaraj at that time uh, was the physician in Hospital uh, Penang where I was working as my house, as a houseman and uh, he was a doctor that uh, insisted that as houseman we should look for evidence of what caused the illness mm -hmm. and uh, it's not just about treating exactly yeah? right okay you uh, go backwards exactly okay. uh -huh. and uh, and at that time there were many parasitic infections like malaria like uh, amoebiasis that caused diarrhea and all that mm -hmm. and uh, because he insisted and advised us to look for the cause we went to the laboratory and examined the specimens from these patients to confirm the clinical diagnosis of mm -hmm. those infections mm -hmm. and that made me interested in the parasitic causes of disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after my housemanship in Penang, I was posted to uh, Paribunta Pari Hospital. Bunta, yeah. And in Paribunta Hospital, which serves the rural areas, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, the number of parasitic infections like malaria, like uh, amoebiasis, like filariasis, were very rampant. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I could see the huge toll of parasitic infections mm -hmm. affecting the population there. It made me very interested in going further into the causes and as well as the control and treatment of parasitic infections. Mm -hmm. And around that time, I was given the opportunity to attend a postgraduate course in the uh, Institute for Medical Research in Kuala Lumpur mm -hmm. uh, in parasitic infections. And took, I took that opportunity to go to the IMR and uh, spent uh, uh, six months doing the postgraduate diploma in applied parasitology and entomology. And uh, there I was introduced into the world of parasites right. and the research of parasitic infections. And uh, uh, I do not know if it was fortunate or unfortunate for me. I topped the class mm -hmm. and the director at that time insisted that I stay back in IMR uh, to do work on parasitic infections and to do research. And so I, I transferred myself, or rather he made, uh, <laughs> he made the transfer for me uh, to go from Penang Hospital to, to uh, Institute for Medical Research. And uh, the rest is history. Right, <laughs> I see. I, I read with much interest um, uh, part of um, um, your your history, um, and now I understand it's your very uh, intrinsic nature of wanting to get to the root of the problem, which probably made you go deeper into understanding some of the causes of the diseases that you saw in Paribunta, and that was when you came across. Um, the fact that nature was interacting with um, uh, the people that because we're talking about rubber tappers right, and rural right, people right. here we're talking about mm, here yeah? mm. and that was when you discovered zoonotic infections yes, and stuff like yes. that it is human beings live in the environment correct yeah. and there's so big an interaction between environment and us and whatever we do is going to affect the environment and the environment is going to affect us correct yeah. and this is all, all part and parcel of public health of population health and all that and uh, I think as long as we realize that it is this interaction that's important and which can determine whether we are healthy or not mm -hmm. and whether we are doing the right things for the environment and what the impact of our actions and environment has uh, we are not going to do very well mm -hmm. and uh, it is and many parasitic infections are related to environmental health Right, right, I see. For example, malaria uh -huh. infection. Global warming causes increase in the mosquito vectors that transmit the in malaria infection. If we clear down forests, we increase the uh, breeding of the mosquitoes that transmit malaria. And we directly and indirectly cause these problems. Right, right. right. Uh, when, uh, so it's a cycle. Exactly, it's there's a cycle. Like this cycle. So how far into the understanding of the root of the problem that you go into when you discovered that okay these rubber tappers were 
affected yeah. by mosquitoes. So did you actually go into those areas? Sure, but there must be a cycle. The mosquitoes can only bring the disease to the rubber tappers if there is a source of infection. And where was this source? And you actually went exactly. out there to go into the So one thing like, you must have an inquisitive mind to be able to, to so trace... So you must have spent a lot of time in... in, in, in in plantations and trying sure, to say <laughs> that was when uh, uh, are those it, the most memorable bits? of course because it is so important to to find the root cause of things because unless you understand the root cause you cannot devise strategies for the control uh -huh. and you have got to be there to find how best the situation can be controlled uh -huh. and 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 refine your strategies so that you optimize the measures that can be brought to bear to control this disease uh -huh. for example uh, we need knew that uh, the monkeys, through our research, mm -hmm. had the same infection of um, filariasis mm -hmm. uh, that infects the rubber tappers. Mm -hmm. right. And uh -huh. uh, the mosquitoes transmit the infection from the monkeys to some rubber tappers uh -huh. at that time, many, many years ago. And uh, if we had not known that, how we would how will we be able to control the infection? So this is the cycle that you're talking about. Uh -huh. that the rubber tappers are there because they want to tap rubber. And the rubber trees is the food of the monkeys. The monkeys you get see. bitten by the mosquitoes right. and transferred back to the humans. And the whole cycle events is just conducive for transfer, for transmission of disease. For example, the peak, the peak uh, uh, time which the rubber tappers work is early dawn. Yeah, dawn, yeah. The peak biting period of the mosquito transmits right, is at dawn. Mm -hmm. The peak time in which the monkeys come down to feed on the rubber seeds is also at dawn. Isn't that a perfect time for the transmission? And these are the yeah, things yeah, that you exactly. actually went down to the to ground study. to research. Yeah. Okay. So this is what you call conviction. All these students around here must have this sort of conviction. All right. Stay with us on Impression. We've got one final block after this. And we want to find out a little bit more about this conviction and what it has done to Professor Mark. Stay with us on in yeah. person. Apa extranya Petronas Premax 95 Extra? Ia menjadikan enjin extra bersih. Menjadikan pemanduan anda extra lancar. Dengan ekstra pecutan yang memberikan ekstra penjimatan sepenuhnya sepanjang masa. Barulah ekstra. Apa makna puasa? Mula-mula bangun sahur, lepas tu pergi sekolah, tak makan, balik sekolah, pergi pasar Ramadan. Puasa tu dengan mm, orang susah. Puasa tu ialah celebration selepas Lepas tu pergi solat terawih, lepas tu balik, buat homework, kemas muka, tidur. Setiap Kamis, analisis awani dalam diskusi. Analisis petang ini akan bercerita mengenai persepsi anak muda ataupun orang muda dan juga isu-isu berkaitan dengan nasionalism, patriotism dan rukun negara menjadi skala pengukurnya. Perdebatan isu semasa. Kita perlu kembali kepada mengapa rukun negara itu diperkenalkan. Kalau kita nak tahu ada keperbagaian di dalam sekolah. Analisis awani 5 petang di Astro Awani, berita segenap dimensi. We're back. This is the Hippocratic Oath. This is the oath that doctors or rather graduates swear by upon their graduation. And this is what everybody holds on to, yes. including yourself, yeah, Prof. Yeah. So, looking at this, we think of the conviction that doctors have to their careers. And you clearly have had amazing conviction because of the research, the time that you put in for research and the experimentation and fact finding and find solution so of all the things that you have done what would you say was the biggest challenge that you have had to deal with in your career well i think the biggest challenge is to get enough medical doctors to get interested in research you know there are so few medical doctors who are really uh, doing research mm -hmm. and I think that's a pity because doctors by the very nature of the training 
have the breadth and depth of knowledge which would stand in good state for them to, to be good researchers. Mm -hmm. They have been trained to, to have an inquisitive mind. They have been trained to ask the right questions. And if they were to see the importance of research, I think it will be fantastic. Most researchers in this country are not medically uh, medically trained doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, are basic scientists who who are doing a great job. Don't misunderstand me. The basic scientists are doing a fantastic res uh, job in terms of research. But we need medical doctors mm -hmm. who are medically trained to be able to add that extra in the research questions which will make a difference to medically related research. And on that note, here we come to on that note, here we come to a sort of like a, a, a paradigm block here. On the one hand, you are a doctor who is convicted to research, which is why you are where you are right now, because of the research that you have done. But at the same time, here you are um, heading the postgraduate centre here in IMU uh, and being a doctor who teaches. On the one hand, you are on a mission of fact-finding. On the other, you are busy teaching the next generation. Isn't there a clash here? You, don't, you only have 24 hours in a day, and 7 days in a week, 365 days in a year. Which one do you do more of? No. You cannot separate research from the teaching and learning functions activities of a university. Research is a core activity which drives excellence in teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. And I think this interaction between research and teaching uh, is so inextricably linked together that you cannot separate it. If you want to be a good teacher, you must be a good researcher. Mm -hmm. Unless you are a good researcher, unless you have that inquisitive streak in you, you would not be able to apply the best practices in teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't see any, uh, any clash in terms of research and teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. In fact, you should, a researcher and a teacher should marry these things together mm -hmm. to create and to educate a new generation of the doctors, doctors and researchers exactly well, which is precisely what yeah, you're doing right yeah, now exactly so what are you working on right now what are your research um, focus on right now my research focus now is at the moment uh, on environmental health mm -hmm. especially the indoor environment you know we spend so much of our time of indoors course, yes. and uh, do you know that there are so many thick conditions uh, ill health which can be acquired in the indoor environment. Just don't talk about uh, what you can uh, get from hospitals. We know that in hospitals you can get hospital acquired infections. Of course, yes. Yeah. Which is very scary. <laughs> exactly. In indoors you can have the, you have heard of things like uh, sick building syndrome. Mm -hmm. Sick building syndromes are situations where you get sick because you stay in a particular uh, indoors because of the unhealthy state of of the of, of the building, mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> we have we are doing very much research on the indoor environment and how the indoor environment can contribute to ill health. For example, we know for a fact that, for example, look at it. Most offices are carpeted, carpeted, yeah? carpeted. Uh -huh. and do you know what carpets have? in relation to the pathogens and the things that we can make us ill from carpets, ticks and mice. Mice, allergens in the mice that give us allergy. Uh, this is one example. So this, this is the kind of thing that yes. you're researching on right now? Yeah? Air conditioners, uh, which if they're not properly serviced, would have uh, things like a kentamiba, mm -hmm. uh, which can carry lots of uh, other bugs in, inside. In this parasite which in the is a protozoan, you have bacteria. And some of these bacteria can be the cause of very serious ill health. For example, Legionella infection mm -hmm. uh, can be carried by Acanthamoeba parasites. Within the air conditioning system. Which are present in the air conditioning system. Right. 
And uh, you can be infected because the air conditioner, simply by being, yes, <laughs> yeah. if you are not properly serviced and maintained, will be able to spew out all this cantamoeba, which carries this uh, viruses and bacteria and uh, other organisms inside them. Because this cantamoeba serves as Trojan horses. Of course, they yes. carry uh -huh. all this and infect the people who are exposed to them. And a lot of people don't know this. Exactly. And this is why you are doing your research yeah. and at the same time you're teaching right. the next generation of doctors. Exactly. So what would you say? I mean, again, let me reiterate, you've got decades of um, experience behind you, decades of research. You've done, what, over 300 papers and um, presented uh, over 60 of them internationally? That's a lot of work done, you know, in within one lifespan. So what would you say? And, and, and let's not even start with the awards. You've, of course, you've got the Joint Medica Award and then you've received the, the National Science Award previously and many other awards. You, you know, we can sit down here for hours just listing down the things that Prof Mark has achieved. So what would you say on a personal level would your next milestone be? If I can uh, train enough people to take over the next generation of, mm -hmm. uh, of research, to be able to encourage much, many more doctors to go into research. Mm -hmm. This would be, I think, the greatest thing I would like to see. More and more people uh, who are interested in research and who can ask critical uh, questions, mm -hmm. ask good research questions, be able to be critical uh, thinkers to bring the next uh, level of research in this country. Right, I see. Okay, well, Prof. Ma, I think that's a very good note to end. We can only hope for the future. And, you know, the future is, in fact, in your hands. Well, you know, the people that are under you. Well, thank you so much well, thank you very for much. your time. And thank you thank so you, much you, for your you, service yeah. to people like me, people, everybody around us. You know, we, we are indirectly and directly benefiting from the work and the research that Prof. Ma has done. And in front of the Hippocratic Oath and also the Chinese Physician Oath and also the Muslim Physician Oath, we end today's program with hope. Thank you so much for joining us. You've been with me, Sat Fradi Noma, and I've of course been with Professor Dr. Mark uh, of International Medical University and joint recipient of the Medica Awards. And you've been watching in person, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.